Hi, everybody. Um, thanks very much for joining. Uh, you are in a joint uh, webinar from, brought to you by Freitas and Gatita, where we're going to talk about smarter, smoother shipping for Amazon Beyond. Um, I am Judah Levine. I'm head of research at Freitas Group. And thank you very much for joining. Um, just to cover the agenda of what we're going to cover, hopefully, in a little under an hour. So uh, first, we're going to look at a, a global freight market overview, which I will present. As I said, I'm the head of research at um, the Freitas Group. And uh, I also produce a, a weekly market update about what's going on in the freight industry, as well as um, different research and reporting on um, trends in, in uh, freight technology and digitization. Um, and I'm going to present uh, what's been going on in, uh, in, with logistics um, and where we see things going moving forward. Uh, next, Aya Mutan, who is a, our customer success expert at Freitos, uh, is going to talk about best practices for getting things moving even during these times of, of uh, disruptions, particularly for Amazon uh, sellers and that types of logistics. And then we'll be joined by Yoni Mazur, who is the uh, CEO at Gatita, who's going to talk specifically about Amazon and, and FBA and some kind of best practices to make sure um, that your operations and uh, your bottom line is optimized in, in these kinds of times. Uh, and then we'll have some uh, Q&A at the end. So you're all encouraged to enter your questions uh, either through the chat or through the, um, the, the questions options um, that you can see through the meeting. Um, and there'll also be a couple of polls that you can take part in uh, at any point during the, during the webinar as well. Um, so before we go in, I'll just say a, a word about Fritos, and then I'll ask Aya and, and Yoni to introduce themselves. Um, so the, the Fritos Group, um, at the Fritos Group, we're, uh, we are building the digital backbone for international freight. Um, and a big part of that is our Fritos.com marketplace, which is an online marketplace connecting thousands of uh, importers and exporters with uh, dozens of logistics service providers, allowing you to search and, and book um, freight the same way we're accustomed to booking hotel rooms or, or booking travel. Um, and uh, with that, I'll ask Aya to say a couple words about himself, about herself, and then uh, Yoni, and then we'll get going. Thanks, Judah. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to have you here and to be speaking to you today. Um, so I lead the customer success team here at Freitos. We are the team that chats with you, uh, talks to you through phone and emails, um, and we're always there to help and support all of our Freitos customers um, and to be specific, Freitos.com customers, uh, so the marketplace customers, uh, to use our searching for quotes tool, um, and we're always here to help. Great. And Yoni, if you could say a word. Yeah, so uh, glad to be here. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm one of the co-founders and uh, chief growth officer of Gatita. Uh, long story short, uh, I, uh, Gatita was born from my experience as an e-commerce seller, particularly Amazon and FBA seller. Uh, I don't sell anymore. We, we made an exit. But um, today, Gatita, what we focus on, we're a technology company, and our claim to fame is our ability to help Amazon sellers uh, get the maximum FBA reimbursements that they're eligible to receive. So typically we can go back 18 months on your data, on your FBA transactions, and find opportunities to get you a recovery, a financial recovery in the format of a reimbursement. Uh, we'll talk more about that later, but that's in a nutshell kind of um, you know, my background, who we are, what's our mission, what's our purpose. Great. Okay. Yeah, okay. actually let's let's continue then. I want me to just take it from here. Uh, sure, or we or we can jump in it. Yeah, let me just jump right into it. So uh, what's Gatita? Is it Gatita? Is it Gatita? How do you say it? It doesn't really matter. It's just an acronym. It stands for uh, Get IDA, which is Get Intelligent Data Analytics. Um, we consider ourselves a global leader in Amazon FBA auditing and reimbursements for the simple fact that whether you sell on Amazon US or Canada or Mexico or UK or Germany, we can help you. Uh, we're an award-winning uh, company. We won the gold award from the American Business Awards for our dashboard technology. We have a dedicated team of claim specialists, a big part of them our former Amazon employees who used to work in Amazon's FBI reimbursement department. So we know what we're looking for, how to present the issues, how to manage all the back and forth, and of course stay compliant. We actually track and monitor our recovery rate, which is over 70%, which means for every 10 cases that we open on behalf of the sellers, more than seven of them get approved and reimbursed to the seller. And we like to make our solutions affordable uh, to, to all sellers at any size, at, at, any, at uh, any stage, because it's free to join. It doesn't cost anything to join Gatita. There's no subscription. Uh, and it's also free to stay with Gatita. Um, and the reason is because we only charge a fee from successful money that we bring to you, from successful reimbursements. So a small example, if we get you this month $100 back, we charge a 25% fee, which will be $25. 
But next month we get you zero dollars, you pay zero dollars. So basically we call this model, model PPR, paper recovery only, which makes it very affordable and very convenient uh, for sellers to get money they never expected to have in their pocket. So that's kind of the idea. Okay. And um, did you want to say where you can be found? Yeah. So of course we can, uh, if you can find more about us at getita.com, of course, uh, fredos.com also, but you can also find us in the Amazon app store. If you visit Amazon Sell Essential, you, you'll notice there's an app store. Uh, you'll find us there. And what does that mean? It means we're an authorized solution provider by Amazon, which means we have a double commitment. We have a commitment to you, the seller, but also to Amazon to make sure that we're terms of service compliant, private policy, data security. Uh, uh, just to hear a little tip, I guess, for you guys to understand, uh, Amazon has uh, allocated about $14 billion to develop their app store. So any kind of solutions uh, that you're looking for your Amazon uh, business, um, it's a good place to kind of look for, you know, and start because uh, these uh, providers are authorized by Amazon. So that's kind of also a tip out there. This is awesome. Okay, same awesome. way, you can also find us Amazon SPN. Uh, so that's also available there. Maybe we can move to the next one, Judah. There yeah. we go. It's you now. All right. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah. So if we just uh, jump right in, what we want to start with is try to understand what's going on in the logistics right now, um, kind of in the overall market and how that's uh, impacting international logistics and FBA uh, logistics as well. So um, if we jump right in, and I think this is, um, you know, on, on all of our minds, um, this is uh, affecting us you know, as, as individual consumers and also as uh, people in, in logistics or in, you know, in uh, commerce or, or retail as well. Um, but if we start at the beginning, what's been driving all the kinds of disruptions that we're seeing in, in the logistics market so far? Um, as I said, as I think we know as consumers since the start of the pandemic or really since last summer, um, there's been a shift of spending from uh, services to goods. So the 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 uh, you know the the dollars that we normally would spend on travel, on entertainment, uh, on restaurants, and going out of the house has been focused on spending on goods that we that we use or consume at home. Um, and uh, also along you know as we as we've seen different um, you know people fortunate enough to be able to save more money, government uh, stimulus and things like that. There's been money to spend. And if we look at this um, chart on the left, this is from uh, IHS market. And in the gray is the volume of um, ocean imports from, uh, from China to the US. And in a normal year, the ocean logistics works in, uh, in kind of peaks and valleys. So normally you will have uh, kind of a lead up to peak season, which starts around um, July, August and trails off around October, November. And that's when all the goods that need to come in for the different holiday seasons, for back to school, for Halloween, Thanksgiving, uh, and into the holidays, all those things need to come in by ocean so that they're on shelves in time for these different events. And then normally there's a cooling off after the holiday period and a, a smaller peak before the Lunar New Year, um, which is generally um, in the end of January or start of February. But if we look uh, back to last June, we see there was this climb, this increase, and then there's just been more or less a nonstop uh, uh, peak ever since then. Um, and so this, you know, the tremendous increase uh, in volumes uh, coming over by ocean uh, is again, being driven by this, by this, the, the different way that we're behaving as, as consumers. And what was that, the effect that that had? So you can increase the amount of ocean capacity and at, at various times, and even now there's kind of a, there's a, a peak of number of uh, ships and containers available to um, to service specifically the Trans-Pacific from from Asia or or most specifically China um, to the U.S., but you can't as easily import uh, import or increase um, uh, port capacity or inland logistics. So what we see, and now we have uh, two examples. Um, we see in in these uh, images on the right, these are maps, and each of these green dots is a is a container ship. Um, so the top one is outside the port of LA Long Beach, and the bottom one is Shanghai and um, uh, and Ningbo. Uh, and we see that, you know, as you have this uh, incredible increase in, in volumes, the ships arrive, but if the schedules are off or if there's just too many at, at once, um, there's not enough capacity at the ports. And then this has continued to back up into in the logistics, warehousing, rails, trucking, all these parts that need to need to service, not only getting the, the containers off the ships, but then the containers um, to their final destinations. All these things have been overwhelmed, creating a backlog. Um, which is kind of the main source of the kind of disruptions we're, we're seeing today. So 
we have the shift in demand. We have these congestion at, at ports and different types of, of logistics after the ocean side. Um, and what is the, the first result, as we know, is this is leading to delays. Um, so um, the, the chart we're looking at here is from Freitas.com Marketplace. And this is looking at end-to-end um, -end, uh, shipment durations uh, from Asia to, to the U.S. Um, and so here, if we, if we look for the, the latest numbers are for September, we see it took 73 days for end to end. That generally means, you know, from its, from its origin until its destination warehouse, uh, not necessarily onto retailers. Uh, uh, you know how many months is it? This is month by month or cause I can't see the numbers underneath. So this is what, yeah, this uh, is monthly. Spectrum. Yeah, this is monthly. And uh, it goes back, it starts from September, uh, 2019 and it goes till, um, uh, to September, Guys, well, past so, 24 months, uh, like two years, past uh, exactly. two years, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty aggressively, uh, you know, uh, agitating. Yeah, definitely. So we see that now it's about 73 days um, end to end for shipments that were booked on the marketplace. And that is 45% um, longer than it was last year, uh, but 83% longer than it was in 2019. So if 2019, it took 40 days, you can expect end to end. Now it's closer to, uh, to 75. So um, things are, first of all, definitely taking longer. The other impact is that it's also become much more expensive. So what we're looking at here is a graph of a bunch of different lanes um, from our Freightos Baltic Index, which is an index of uh, uh, for the uh, containerized freight spot market, the cost to send a 40 foot container um, from one region to another. Um, if we look at the uh, yellow and orange lines, this is Asia to the US East Coast and West Coast. Um, in blue, we have Asia to Europe and in green is transatlantic. But what we can see is since the start of the pandemic or since last summer, it, it, this goes from last June, as we had this increase in spending on goods, as ocean volumes increased, as demand kind of outstripped capacity, and then as ports really got congested, we've kind of had a nonstop uh, increase in rates. And the, the increases, again, this is for the, for the spot market, uh, the increases have really been um, uh, unprecedented. So uh, currently it costs about $17,000 to send a a container from let's say Shanghai to LA Long Beach or from Asia to the US to the US West Coast. And under normal circumstances, it would cost about $1,500. So you're talking about more than 10 times um, uh, the cost to send a, to send a full container uh, from Asia to, to Europe or something like a eight times as expensive. So rates are, are extremely elevated um, and they've been continuing to be uh, much more expensive, um, especially in the last few months as we've had this lead up to peak season. So every year you'll have this lead up to peak season. This year we have we have the lead up and as things were already kind of overwhelmed, it just pushed rates um, even, even that much higher. Um, if we talk about air freight as well or air cargo, it's been uh, a similar story, but with some differences. So as I said, in, in Ocean, there was really an effort to activate as much capacity as, as possible. Um, you know, at a certain point now, there really is enough capacity for all the demand, but it's overwhelmed infrastructure, right? If you can't get those ships uh, processed through the port and back to their, to their origin, um, then you can add as many ships as you want. It's not really going to speed things up and it's not really going to bring rates down if, um, you know, that capacity is essentially just uh, sucked up by, by waiting days outside of a port. Um, and air cargo, it's been slightly different. Uh, air cargo, normally about 50% of air cargo travels by passenger jet in the belly holds of, of passenger jets. And as there's been kind of a, a significant decrease in passenger travel, um, that capacity has been taken off the market. So even though there hasn't been the huge increase in demand or air cargo volumes, air cargo volumes are about, um, have recovered our, our a few percent, maybe globally up um, year on year, but you don't have these massive kind of increases that we have in, in ocean just by the nature of the types of, uh, of goods that can travel by air and that air is more expensive. Um, but air has also been much more expensive than it normally has. So if we look at this graph, um, this is air rates taken from our um, from the Freightus.com marketplace. Uh, it's starting from January of 2020 through, um, uh, you know, th uh, through uh, October, October of this 5th, year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so we see we had this, this huge jump um, uh, last spring, and this was because of the PPE. If we recall, there was this big rush on, on PPE. Um, there's a huge demand in a short amount of time. And as I said, capacity restricted. But as you see, there's been a lot more volatility. It's not only been, been up and up throughout the year, um, but we see that rates remain you know, at least double. Now they're about triple uh, to four times what they normally are. 
And again, this is because the capacity is restricted. We're also having disruptions due to due the, to uh, COVID itself in terms of ground crews having to quarantine or um, or air crews having to quarantine, uh, different kinds of, of disruptions. Um, and also because of the mess in, in ocean logistics is also impacting the, um, uh, the shifting some of that demand, things that can be flown uh, by air cargo uh, to shift to that more expensive uh, expensive option. Question here, uh, Judah. So this is month to month growth, right? Go back to the chart. Right? Uh, no, so this, is, mean, this is versus the start of the year. Yeah, this the 2020 year. To, so uh, so it, it spiked almost 500% right around April last year when the pandemic hit. But then it still increased. But instead of uh, almost 500%, the next month it increased right, like by 200% from, right? So it's constant, constant inflation. It's a compounding, right? It goes up like 500% and then it goes up another 100%. And then another. Uh, no, no. This is no? this is against this baseline. This is against the start compared to the start of the start of. Yeah, the just pandemic. a final price. So the price was being piked up and started going down, and then uh, yeah, gradually. Exactly. But as we can see, it still remained much more expensive than it normally would be. Um, you know, if it's something like eleven to twelve dollars per kilo from uh, Shanghai to uh, to LAX, um, that price is normally like two fifty three dollars, even during a peak time. Yeah, it seems like it's climbing back to that peak of uh, uh, the pandemic when it hit that uh, almost. Yeah, it's been getting. Yeah, yes, it's been getting um, more expensive, and again, that's because of some of this ocean to air conversions. Things that are that are, because of disruptions in the ocean, some things are moving to air. There have also been um, uh, several uh, positive cases of uh, ground crews or other things, uh, specifically in in uh, in Asia, um, which have shut down airports for. For various amounts of time and any of kinds of these additional uh, disruptions especially when there is such tight capacity will have an increase on rates and as i said we're no we're, you know we're approaching air cargo peak season in their under normal circumstances but it's been pulled earlier because of all these other disruptions um and when capacity is tight um if there's you know when when any small increase or dis, of reduction in capacity or increase in demand is going to have an outsized uh, impact on rates so that's yeah, it's literally the, the perfect storm that's is being brewed here so it's unique uh, times yeah definitely um okay so uh the, as we've seen there's been a lot of different disruptions there's a lot been a lot of different um uh, uh, tensions and pressures on the on the supply chain, um, and has been has as has been reported. You know, the supply chain is getting a lot of coverage in the kind of on all of our consciousness and mainstream media and, and things like that. And we've seen that even the the largest importers um, are struggling with delays and rising costs and things like that. And you know, there's talks of, about how these uh, kind of increases are are contributing to inflation. Um, uh, and some of these uh, major retailers like like Walmart, like Home Depot, like IKEA, they're taking kind of very unusual steps to try and mitigate uh, mitigate the disruptions and try and to uh, you know to make sure they have their uh, inventory uh, on time. Um, so there's been reports of the, of those kind of major retailers chartering their own ships. Um, Coca Cola was sending things by by uh, tanker as opposed to by container ship. So uh we, we see that really you know no pun intended but everyone big and small is kind of in, in the same boat uh in terms of uh, of trying to figure out ways to um you know to to expedite and and save as as much as possible during these times um but it's certainly possible that smaller businesses have been uh, also hit and possibly hit harder um because simply you know smaller uh, importers don't have the same resources and options that, that larger ones do um, and we did a couple of polls uh, since the beginning of the year, looking at different things, uh, different ways that SMBs might have been impacted from our own um, user base. So uh, we ran this survey uh, twice, once at the beginning of the year and once in, in June before Amazon Prime Day. And what we saw was that it, by June, almost half of our respondents uh, had increased their prices because of disruptions to the supply chain. Um, right, rising costs. They've had to increase their own prices to kind of absorb those um, those kinds of shocks. Um, and almost a third said that they were also or were were um, reducing their margins, um, either in conjunction with increasing prices or in order to absorb those kind of uh, increased uh, their own increased costs. So we see that that for you know small businesses, for a lot of them, it's it's hitting their bottom line. We also uh, asked about Prime Day itself, and you know uh, things are more disrupted and more expensive than they were uh, in June. So we would expect that you know uh, 
the, the situation is at, at least as serious um, now as it was then. But we saw that almost half were expecting shortages because of delays in logistics. Um, or, you know, as with the holidays um, uh, approaching, that's also a concern. Um, there are also some that said, you know, more than a third said that they were experiencing shortages because it wasn't profitable to import with prices so expensive. So SMBs are, are also, you know, definitely um, feeling the pain and, and possibly more than, uh, than some of the bigger retailers as everyone's looking for ways to kind of uh, mitigate the impact. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before, um, before I, I close and I'll, I'll hand over to Aya, uh, is I want to let you know about a, a, a tool we have. So the, the rates we were looking at before were from the ocean rates from our FBX, our Fredos Baltic Index. We have another index that we call um, our, the Fredos FBA Index or the FBAX. Um, and this takes rates from our marketplace that Aya is going to talk about in a minute. Um, and provides an index of, uh, of different options, uh, you know, full container load, less than container load, and air, um, to give you a sense of what prices are specifically to ship from Asia to major FBA warehouses in the United States. So you can check that out at ship.2 slash FBAX. Um, and it's also a helpful tool either in addition to the, to the FBX or, or standalone to give a sense of, uh, of prices. Um, and I know that's been kind of a, a lot of a lot of gloom and doom. The question, of course, is when is all this going to end? And the conventional wisdom, and we've been talking about this uh, in the industry, you know, for many months, is that the things will start to go back to normal when consumer behaviors change. So when we stop spending as much on goods and shift those dollars back uh, to services, uh, demand for ocean freight will um, will ease, and that will start easing all these different uh, choke points along the way. That had kind of started to happen this summer with the Delta variant, it's kind of receded. So there was a starting to be an increase on uh, spending on services. And that's kind of um, uh, uh, is not making as much progress as, as was hoped um, uh, by now. So that seems to be a little while off. So the, the first thing is that, you know, related to the, to the pandemic itself, related to um, uh, how much the virus is in control and how much um people's uh, spending will uh, will change that will be the first thing that will that will start to uh, ease some of this pressure um however with uh the, the other problem is as we said we have this congestion and you also have lower inventories so as Andreas mentioned you know the pandemic has changed demand for a lot of different things and so with inventories coming in there are also very strong sales in many sectors and so with inventories low especially for major retailers they want to have a more of a, a buffer in, in stock and so that will, will uh, even once um, kind of consumer behaviors change, retailers will still keep ocean volumes up for a while. So um, unfortunately, the expectations are that, you know, will rates stay at, you know, close to $20,000 per container? Um, probably not. It'll start to come down. But, you know, how much rates will come down, how much the, the backlogs and delays will ease um, is, is a big question. For a long time, we were saying it wouldn't be till after uh, Lunar New Year um, of 2022, which is February. And with the way things are, are looking now, they are worse than people expected. And they're expecting that kind of easing even once, you know, consumer behaviors change to take much, uh, go take us much further into 2022, um, unfortunately. And so, uh, as I said, you know, it, this is not, uh, it, there, there, as we all know, there's a lot of disruptions um, and it's, uh, there's a lot of gloom and doom. But there's also the fact that, you know, freight has continued to move and things are moving all the time. As we know, there's delays. It takes longer. It's more expensive. But logistics has never shut down throughout all of this. Um, and th that being said, there are also ways and best practices to make sure that um, that uh, your shipments or that you are doing the most you can to uh, to make sure your shipments get to where they need to get to at the best price and as quickly as possible. And to speak more about that, I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Aya, who will um, talk about uh, FBA importers, exporters, the types of pains that they're seeing now and best practices for uh, for doing the best we can in these times. Aya, please. 
Thanks, Judah. Um, Judah told us a lot about the issues and all of the struggles that have been going all around the world with freight. Um, and of course, I, me and my team have been seeing these struggles with our customers who book shipments through Freightos and with other customers outside of the platform. Um, please feel free to share your experiences through the chat. Um, you can also answer your poll, uh, our, our polls. Um, on the um, right sidebar um, to tell us if you have had any bad experiences shipping in the past year or so. Um, so, Judah, can you please um, go to the next slide? Okay, um, so as I said, uh, basically all around the news, you can hear about all of the struggles um, for shipping. We have expensive rates, uh, we have delays, um, we have also issues with congestion, um, we have issues with customs clearance, we have issues all around the place. But what can we do and where does Freito stand um, in all of this uh, chaos? So basically, as Judah mentioned, Freitos is a platform where you can book your shipments online. Um, we are not as a freight forwarder, but we deal with different freight forwarders uh, with, with whom you can book your shipment. Um, Judah, please, the next slide. Um, so if you go to Freitos, um, of course, you will lose time when you're shipping. You might face delays, but you don't want to lose time looking for a shipping quote. And this is where our value comes because the quotes that used to take a few weeks to get from the front forwarders you can get in a few minutes just going to the platform and filling in your details and running your search next please so if you can look at the the slide here basically um if you go to freitos you fill in all of your shipment details and then um, you can also include different services like customs clearance, insurance, and whatever you need for your shipment. Um, and I'll go into the specifics of F FBA uh, shipping in a little bit. But basically, you'll find different quotes from different shipping companies. You'll be able to compare um, transit times. You'll be able to compare the pricing. Um, you'll see different modes like Ocean, Air, and Express. And you can book your shipment online very easily. And and we have a lot of things that can help you in making your decision. In regular times, it's really easy because you have a price in mind, um, you have a transit time in mind, and that's it. There's nothing else that you need to uh, to think about. But I let you uh, know about the few solutions that we've created specifically for uh, what's happening at this point in a little bit. Um, the next one, Judith, please. So it's not only about booking a shipment or looking for a quote or the ease of booking a shipment online in a few minutes but it's also about how to deal with that after booking so this is why our tool also makes sure that you are able to manage all of your shipments in one place even if you are dealing with different shipping companies and um, you'll be able to see um, all of the updates. You'll be able to message your freight, your different freight forwarders all in one place and one website. That is very easy um, to deal with. The next one, please. Okay, um, so to be specific, uh, basically this is our search page. Um, as you see, um, you can input your origin, destination, load, and goods, and then you are taken to the recommended services where you can add different services. But if we are talking about FBA, and if you can tell us like who uh, from you is an FBA seller, you can answer that in the poll or, or use um, the reactions. But basically, if you are an FBA seller, um, if you go to Freitos, you have specific destination types that you can use to book to Amazon. Um, so you can see the fulfillment center or last mile delivery warehousing. So these are two different options and to, differen to differentiate between 
between them. Basically, the fulfillment center is to ship directly to Amazon. So um, in the address section, you'll see a list of all of the Amazon warehouses and you can choose your assigned warehouse. And then if you want to book your shipment to the forwarder's warehouse instead of Amazon directly, and I know this is very important for customers nowadays because of the limitations for Amazon shipping, because I know that there are a very specific number of units that you can deliver um, at once. So this option is for you because you can choose to book your shipment to the forwarder warehouse and then choose another carrier to split the shipment and then take it uh, in batches instead of um, one shipment. The next one, please. Yeah, and one thing that I forgot to mention is the fact that if you choose one of the two Amazon options, you'll have specific recommended services for you as an Amazon seller so you'll have amazon labeling and palletization as part of the recommended services so, so you can add them to your shipment um, and now you're wondering okay i know but how can you help me as someone that's dealing with the struggles of shipping at this point first of all as freightos we have an sop um, a policy that all of our forwarders um, run by they all of them we make sure that all of them uh follow everything in the SOP um, in how they process shipments. And this SOP keeps getting updated based on what's happening in the market to make sure that our, our customers are protected against anything that can happen. So this is the first thing. Another thing is that what we are doing at this point is after tracking the performance of our forwarders, we were able to determine that some forwarders are doing a better job than others in dealing with the current situation. And this is something that we pass to our customers. It's very important information for you to know. And even though all of the forwarders um, are being tracked and they are doing their best, but we do have some forwarders that deal with specific carriers or specific agents that have more capacity. And in this case, we do give them badges to help the customers choose the best quote for them. And as you can see here, um, you can see the badge on the quote um, right next to the forwarder's name. Next, please, Judah. Another thing that was very important after all of the surveys that we've sent to our customers throughout the pandemic is guaranteed capacity. So even though everyone was struggling with different things, the main thing that all of our customers chose that would be the most important thing for them is to guarantee space because space was very hard to get uh, during the pandemic and until now. So what we have done is that we have started this project with um, specific forwarders that we are dealing with for guaranteed capacity. And that means that when you book a shipment, you know that there is actually uh, available space um, for your shipment as soon as it's ready. We have different policies that are related to guaranteed capacity. You can see that that in notes of each guaranteed capacity quote. And as you can see, you will see the guaranteed capacity badge. And as I said, so for regular shipments, um, usually you book the shipment and then the forwarder goes to the carrier to ask if they have space. This is not the case for guaranteed capacity because for guaranteed capacity, as soon as you place the booking, that means that you do have space and not that the forwarder will check and get back to you. So this is very important and we are very proud that we were able to launch this project and we hope that it will help a lot of our customers um, with their shipping. Great. Good. Well, I uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm sure that was uh, uh, very helpful to a lot of the uh, people listening. Um, as we said, you know, despite the disruptions, there are still ways to make sure you're doing the best you can you know, not only to, to reduce your costs as much as possible, um, but also to make sure you are, um, you know, operationally wise that you're, you're doing uh, the best to make sure your shipments get there when you need. Um, Yoni, if we could hand it over to you. Yep, let's do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, you don't have, next. You yeah, don't have your camera on. Um, but yeah, you so. Me? You guys see me or hear me? I can hear you. You don't see me? I uh, can you see me? 
Yeah, I see you, Yanni. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. So my camera should be okay. Um, yeah, let's go to the next slide and I guess to get rolling. Yeah, so I just to, you know, I, uh, as uh, to, to kind of transition what we've been, been speaking about, um, you know, we've been talking about um, uh, logistics and the operation side, um, but with how, you know, how hectic things are and how, you know, the, the tremendous increase in, in e-commerce uh, is telling as well, um, you know, it's, it, and also, as we said, you know, the, the added pressure on small businesses in terms of rising costs um, and sometimes shrinking margins or having to increase your prices as well, I'm sure it's become more important than ever to make sure that you're, you know, optimizing your business and making sure that, that you know, uh, what, whatever um, revenue that you are generating, uh, you're actually seeing, um, the, seeing the results. So can you tell us a little bit of, about FBA auditing um, and maybe how things have changed during the pandemic as we go through? Sure thing, yeah, we're gonna talk all about it. Um, before I jump into this uh, slide here, I just kind of uh, wanna uh, segue from Judah into the world of auditing. And, and give an idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. So right now we're kind of discussing uh, the, the, the part of the, the chain of reaction of, of sourcing, right? You source your product and you want to logistically be able to transition it to a logistically its final destination. Now, if you sell on Amazon and particularly Amazon FBA, uh, your final destination for these inventory uh, units is uh, Amazon's fulfillment centers. Uh, that's kind of the mission that Fredo's is a genius in helping because it can streamline the whole process. It could be freight, uh, containers, air, land, last mile. Uh, that, so that can alleviate a lot of the pain for, for those functions. But um, once your inventory hits Amazon's warehouse and fulfillment centers, this is where the world of auditing, this is what uh, this is where we come to life. And I want to uh, bring this information to you so you understand that there's actually more work to be done because you already experienced so much challenges just to get it in. But it's not over yet. It's not, if you if you salute yourself, uh, job, job well done, you should. But there's actually more to go. And now we're going to dive into the, the mix. So uh, what happens is once your inventory gets to Amazon, uh, it experiences all these issues. And these are uh, this is kind of the overview of the main issues. And I'll touch each one of them. So the first one you see is FBA inbound shipments. Right? That's pretty much straightforward. The, the basic of all basics. Let's say you're shipping 10,000 units to Amazon's fulfillment center. Right, You sourced it in Asia. You went through the whole craziness of uh, global logistics. But Fredo's helped to alleviate all the pain. Your units already arrived, and Amazon, instead of receiving 10,000 units, only received, let's say, 9,000 units. So 1,000 units are missing. You actually have to reconcile it as a seller. Don't expect Amazon to automatically say, "Hey, we the 9,000 units are uh, sorry, 1,000 units are missing, uh, and maybe here's money. Just pay you money." It's not going to work that way. So what you need to do is go to your Amazon Sell Essential account, look at the shipment logs, and each shipment that you shipped into FBA, reconcile it. So of course, if you see that 10, uh, from 10,000 units, only 9,000 units got uh, received. Uh, you got to open a case with Amazon and report to them that 1,000 units are missing. And uh, if Amazon finds them and you, they get into your stock, you're good to go. If they don't, what, what's going to happen, they're going to provide you with a reimbursement, a financial reimbursement, which will cover you. So hopefully you, you'll get paid. Uh, so this uh, reconciliation process, you have a, a, a time window in the United States and Amazon.com uh, US of nine months. After nine months, if you don't reconcile it and they owe you money for anything that they lost, it expired. You're never going to get that money back. So you have a time frame of nine months. But if you sell on Amazon UK or Europe, you have six months. So be attentive to that. I don't know what is your final uh, marketplace destination, but I want to make sure that you know the rules of the game. Now, after your units got uh, received by Amazon in their fulfillment center, um, there's more issues that can happen inside Amazon's fulfillment center, like uh, units that get lost or damaged. Right, so you get and and with this issue, you're able to go back 18 months. You have to download all these data files and reconcile all these transactions to discover all the units that got lost or damaged. Uh, and you have 18 months to do it. Once again, after 18 months, if you don't do it and you have you're eligible to get paid uh, reimbursement, that expires. So make sure you do so. Uh, and then also customer uh, refunds. So sometimes uh, the consumer bought a product from you on FBA and they uh, they uh, they want to get a refund. So they got a refund from Amazon and they're supposed to ship the unit back. Uh, and instead of shipping it back, they never did. They forgot or during transit, uh, the carrier lost it or Amazon didn't receive it properly. So uh, eventually the, the consumer got refunded, but the unit never returned to your stock. So you got to reconcile that also. And you have 18 months to do so. Uh, and then you have FBA removal orders. So if you ever take your units, your inventory out of Amazon, let's say you, uh, you want to remove 10,000 units and uh, you only receive uh, 9,000 units uh, and you know units came missing. So uh, you can reconcile that also and you have 18 months. And then you have uh, on the bottom, uh, weight and dimension fees uh, over charges. So this is uh, less logistical. This is more financial based on data. For example, 
let's say your product is this phone cover and it's uh, less than 10 uh, uh, ounces and less than uh, four inches. So uh, Amazon, every time they fulfill the unit, meaning when they pick it from the bin, they package in a box, they ship it out, and they charge you a fulfillment fee. Let's say they're supposed to charge you $3 per unit, per order, every time uh, you sold the unit, based on the weight and dimensions, but they have incorrect data. So they think your product is, instead of three inches, it's uh, it's uh, three feet. And instead of being uh, 10 ounces, it's uh, 10 pounds. So because of that, they might charge you $10 a unit. So financially, they're overcharging you $7 every time you sold the unit. So you can reconcile that and audit for that. And you have uh, and, uh, three months to do it. So uh, don't do it once a year, because if you do it once a year, and let's say Amazon overcharge you 100 grand, in the past 90 days or three months, they only charge you 30,000, you're gonna be able to get $30,000 back into your pocket and the $70,000, you're not gonna be able to recover. So this is kind of the overview of the rules of the game. And you have to know this, because if you don't reconcile and get everything that you owed, uh, you had a loss. And now statistically speaking, uh, Judah, if you can move to the next slide, we find that the discrepancy rate, uh, if you see uh, point number one to make, is uh, the discrepancy rate on an annual basis can range between one to 3%, right? So from your annual sales. So if you sell a million dollars in Amazon, right? A one to 3% of discrepancy rate, all the units that got lost, damaged, destroyed, disappeared, not returned or overcharged with fees, uh, can be 10 to $30,000. Once again, you do a million a year, one to 3% is 10 to $30,000, that probably it's owed to you. So you have to, you know, everybody can do their own mathematics. A different way to look at it <clears throat> is for is that um, for every 100 units you ship to Amazon, between one to three units is going to experience an issue, a discrepancy. It's going to get lost, damaged, all these issues between between all Amazon's, uh, you know, life cycle of, of uh, logistical uh, management with the fulfillment center. Now, um, point number two to make, we gave you the breakdown. So the, for the most part, you have up to 18 months to reconcile everything. So do not miss out because it's really it's your money. Uh, it's owed to you. Uh, so it's an opportunity and point number three to make is when you open a case with Amazon and you need to manage all the back and forth and they're asking for more, more documentation, make sure to give it to them so they can approve your claim and, and so you can get paid a reimbursement. And of course, great, uh, Fredos can be a, an amazing resource for that because once you use Fredos and to align all the, all the transactions, all the, the logistical uh, uh, movement of your inventory from the source all the way to the fulfillment center, because using a platform which is so, so organized, you can have all the documentations needed. You're going to have a, a bill of lading, uh, customs, all these things that you need to prove to Amazon that you actually had sourced <clears throat> and shipped these units. So having a, you know, a, a partner as Fredos to, uh, to manage uh, your logistics on a global scale really helps with this function of auditing because you have to have your ducks and your data in a row. So uh, that, that's really uh, recommended to do to, to uh, manage all the reconciliation. Okay, let's uh, move to the next slide. It's just a white slider. Or we're waiting. Oh, boom. Okay. Now uh, I gave you kind of the overview of uh, the things you got to look out for, but this is kind of um, more issues. This is kind of the breakdown that we uh, look for further into, uh, you know, us get here. So if you ever wonder why you might need help in auditing FBA, you know, uh, look at this. And if any of this looks kind of foreign to you, strange or like Chinese, it probably means that you're old money, right? So the idea is here is if you ever need, uh, you can join Gatita. We're going to go back 18 months on your data, find all these issues and bring that money back to you. And once again, it's free to join. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything to stay. Only if we find you money that you're not able to find yourself and to get, only then we get compensated. So um, this is kind of the, the point we're trying to make here on why you might potentially need help in further auditing. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, and here's a case study kind of to demonstrate uh, the, the positive impacts on the bottom line uh, when you have successful auditing uh, in place when selling on Amazon on FBA. So if you take a look at this case study, you see that the year, yearly revenue on FBA is about $18 million for the seller. Inventory units sold is about 318,000 units, right, for the whole year, of which 8,954 units got affected with all these issues, right? Got lost, damaged, destroyed, disappeared, not refunded and the overcharge with fees, which puts it at 2.8% total inventory affected, right? Remember I mentioned there's one to 3% discrepancy rate and this example is 2.8%. Uh, if you look down, you'll see that 151 in the green, $151,000 was recovered with reimbursements, okay? Which look what I did to the bottom line. Look underneath it, you see 10.92% increase in the bottom line profit, okay? Because of all this money that uh, was recovered with reimbursements added to the bottom line. Because if you look even at the bottom side uh, area, uh, you see that gross profit before Gatita was 1.3 million and reimbursement Gatita kind of helped to recover 151,000, uh, pushed the bottom line and updated it to 1.5 million. And on the bottom line result is 10.92%, almost 11 points percent on the bottom line. Because once again, you're able to go back 18 months through data, find all these discrepancies, 
all these opportunities to get a financial recovery. You open the cases, you get that, and all of a sudden this money has no cost. It goes straight to the bottom line and it boosts your profit. Now, if you look on the left side, there's a big trend today to sell your Amazon, uh, you know, business. Uh, you know, it's, it's a big, big trend. Uh, sellers are making good exits. And uh, so there's two more opportunities to make more money here. One, one uh, function is if you're trying to sell your business, because when you try to sell a business, whoever you're selling it to is going to buy your profit, right? They pay you a multiple, a yearly multiple on your profit. So in this example, $151,000, if you get a 3x multiple or 4x or 5x, you're going to get much more juice. So for example, let's be conservative. You're going to get 3x multiple on your business. So all of a sudden, this $151,000 that you added to the bottom line is worth three times more. So it's worth $450,000 when you're about to sell your business. So that's very impactful. So sophisticated, prudent sellers who you know interesting in selling you have to really seize that opportunity now if you're buying an amazon business in the other side of the map you have a great opportunity you can buy an amazon fba business whoever sold it to you failed to recover all the money that was you know there was available and you're going to do it instead of them so you're going to go back 18 months get all these reimbursements get $151,000 back and you're going to have a really good return on investment very, very quickly why because you know all the options available to you to optimize you know your income and your profits so that's kind of the point we're trying to make here with uh, this case study so hopefully this is useful for everybody uh judah let's move to the next uh, slide and here's a few tools for you guys if you want um you know for amazon sellers so if you just visit gatita.com forward slash ebook you're going to get a package of three things the first thing you're going to get is on the right side is uh is in a book it's a book about how to read an amazon income statement because um Amazon and Sell Essential, all the data that's available over there, it's it can get it can be very confusing. So this book focuses on the breakdown of all the money com that's coming in from Amazon and where it's all going to, especially all the fees. So I recommend you, the sellers, to read it or your big bookkeeper or your accountant because they need to understand all the financial data. So that's a, kind of a helpful tool. The second tool that you see is a, a, a profit and loss a, a template, a, 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 a tracker, so you can actually put all the business expenses because today we kind of ex only discuss expenses, a uh, cost of you know global logistics and also uh, of uh, auditing FBA uh, you know, for reimbursements. But you have to also know every single penny and dime in your business. So this tool is really great to know the, the bottom line profit or loss so you can keep track of it. And the third thing is uh, that you get in the package is your wedding dimensions tracker. So uh, like the example I gave earlier, Amazon charges you fulfillment fees based on the wedding dimensions. So if uh, over time uh, this information uh, you know, is updated and it's incorrect and now they're overcharging you with fees, Oh, you got to get a reimbursement for that. So this is a tracker that you can use. So hopefully you guys uh, will find this useful uh, tools uh, for your, you know, to grow your business and manage it. All right, let's do the next slide. And here's some more kind of uh, free stuff, I guess. Um, if anybody wants, um, you, you can just visit uh, getita.com forward slash Fredo's. Uh, and then we're going to give them $400 in free reimbursements, which this is a guarantee. So no matter what, you're going to have $400 more in your pocket. Because uh, it might take us a day, it might take us a few weeks or a few months to get you $400 in reimbursement, but you're going to get it. And after $400, if you want to leave us, that's fine. If you want to stay with us, that's fine as well. We're only here to help. So um, just, you know, by spending your time here and, and learning all your everything that's available to you to alleviate the pain of global logistics, but also taking action on auditing. In addition to all that, if you want to kind of try it out and, um, you know, actually make 400 bucks guaranteed, this is another opportunity for you. So hopefully uh, you'll consider that opportunity and offer. All right, let's do the next slide. Uh, yeah, we have one more one more promo before we uh, get to your, some of your questions. So first of all, Yoni, thank you very much. That was that was uh, terrific. You know, it's a, an entire universe that um, I'm sure many of us didn't know about yet, and, and a very important one given these times. Um, the other promotion is uh, for Fredos.com. So for Gatita users, you can go to ship.fredos.com um, and at the Gatita 999. And you get a promo code that will get you fifty dollars, fifty to hundred dollars off um, bookings of uh, of different sizes. Um, with that, I think we'll we'll move on to a couple of questions that we received. And Yoni, the first one for you. And this is my question. Um, you know, I and I have been talking about how things have changed over the course of the pandemic, and I'm sure that you know um, FBA auditing and and mistakes in the warehouse or just the scale of, of operations. There are these different kinds of reconciliations that always have to take place. Have you been seeing differences over the course of the pandemic in terms of, you know, I don't know, things getting better, things getting worse, specific mm -hmm. types of items that are having more of problems? What have, you, what have you been seeing? 
Yeah, so honestly, uh, in peak times and uh, with the massive bottlenecks happened, we saw more uh, uh, discrepancies. Where uh, I think uh, the backstory on Amazon side is that they were hiring so many people so quickly. I think at one point, one month, they were hired over 100,000 people, which is, I don't know, historically, if there's ever such a fast rate to, it's like an army going to war. You or you draft all these soldiers, like whoever you can, just to, to be able to um, to manage all the craziness. But yeah, once that happened in the back end with Amazon, there's a lot of uh, you know new new team members being trained, trained properly, improperly. So they're losing packages, you know, damaging stuff. So we found, uh, but it's very hectic. It's like that chart you showed with the with the uh, with the pandemic hitting up and then up and down with the with the cost. It was similar to that. That's what we see. But honestly, there's uh, this. It's it's such a variety of things that to consider. It's also the profile of the products. Some some products are more prone to get damaged than others. For example, if you see your your product is a wine glass, so it can crack and get damaged. But if you're selling, um, you know, um, a rubber ball, you know, for kids to play with, it doesn't really get damaged, you know, or anything like that. So it also depends on the profile of the product. It also depends on Amazon's fulfillment center. Some fulfillment centers are more efficient and professional than others. So it's a myriad of craziness uh, over uh, and, and variables to consider. But a high level, we see that it's still very consistent being one to three percent. So right, so one to three percent from every unit that you ship into the the warehouses might get affected. At times that one to three percent can focus more on the three percent side, and when things are balanced, it can be more on the two and a half percent or two percent. But it's pretty consistent on you know the bottom and top because Amazon uses a lot of technology at the end of the day, uh, which covers ninety to seven percent of the issues. And that one to three percent is more human related as you as they grow and hire more people. So hopefully this uh, this kind of covers the, that uh, function of question. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, there was uh, a, a couple questions from the, the from some of the attendees, uh, also uh, for you, Yoni. Um, the first one is about I think the uh, trying to understand the 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 structure of um, you know the, the the reconciliations or the recoveries that you're making and how Gatita um, is compensated for that. Uh, so it asks on a, on a monthly basis is Gatita running an APA into the back end of Amazon Seller Central to see where there is money owed. And That's the question correct. Was, yeah, so we actually do it. If we actually nothing, do it on a daily basis, just to jump into answering it. Okay. Instead of month, we actually do it daily. We added all of our users every single day on a, uh, uh, all over the world. And the second part was, um, was what if there is no discrepancies? Yeah, no discrepancy. You're paying us nothing. No problem at all. In other words, if there's no news, that's good news. Uh, and it doesn't cost anything. You connect with Gatita. We do all the work on the back end. And if we find an opportunity for you and we, we find you money or and you get paid by Amazon, uh, let's say you got paid $100, we charge a 25% fee. Now, I see Danny also has kind of a segue uh, or a follow-up on that. Um, so what happens is Amazon doesn't pay us. It pays you. It pays you the money and, and adds the funds to your Amazon Seller Central account. And typically, Amazon pays the sellers every two weeks. So they add it to your payment. And then only then, once a month, we actually kind of do a summary. And of course, if we find uh, money and we recovered it, uh, we're going to charge a credit card on file. So the credit card is just to be, have on file. So if we are all money, we are able to charge. But of course, if we, we find you nothing, we get you nothing, you pay nothing. So that's kind of the dynamic of how it works. Okay. Interesting. Um, the, a follow-up question was, how do we add a new marketplace to our existing Gatita account? All right, it's, it's a great question. So we'll go to your Gatita dashboard. On the left side, you see add a new store. You can click that. And it's going to pop, pop up another box. And in that box, you can choose your marketplace. If it's uh, the U.S., uh, uh, if it's a UK, if it's Germany, whatever it is, you just choose it and it should be good to go. Okay. Um, great. Are there any other uh, questions? I, I think Daniel has one more. And uh, let me see. I think there were actually a few questions for you guys if you want to take them. I saw earlier. Uh, I think uh, was a question from Duncan. Um, he said that he had a container stuck in LA and then it got stuck in Chicago. Uh, in Chicago, there's a container rack. So a little tip on that, Duncan, I don't know if you were, uh, you're going to be able to uh, save this situation of these containers, but in general, uh, as far as I understand on the Chicago side, if that's a uh, destination you use a lot, try to avoid having the train, right? So try to ship into uh, in the West Coast and then have it by truck uh, get to your final destination in the Chicago area if that's your destination. Because uh, then also they have a, a backlog and and and, and um, bottlenecks on on the train part <clears throat> on the train part of, of things. That's kind of what I heard from uh, sellers in the community. So hopefully that's uh, helpful. Um, I think Daniel's had a little follow up. Um, really? Okay, so Same if question Anna, about credit card, yeah. No, no. I think Daniel said if there is an Amazon refund and you don't need to find it, do you take? Uh, on the 25% uh, from that or not. So no, so anything you get automatically from Amazon, we don't touch that, that's all yours, of course. And of course, if even if you do your own auditing, you're doing your own cases, 
uh, you get paid reimbursement. Of course, that's yours. We don't have anything to, to do with it. Uh, in addition, we actually encourage the sellers to do the maximum we can do to get all the money and reimbursements that you you know how to get, right? Do everything you can do. That's yours. Keep it. And whatever you're missing out on, we're going to come in and get that for you. That's kind of the partnership uh, that we expect to have where you do as much as you can, you know, exhaust all your resources. And then we're going to be that extra resource to, to back you up and be like an insurance policy to make sure you get everything that you're eligible to get. And that's how we fulfill the mission to get you the maximum that you're eligible to receive. And only if we're successful, we get rewarded. Yes, we can differentiate what we did versus what you, you did. It's pretty simple because uh, there's case IDs. So a case, a case we open, it's, it's, it has a unique case ID. Whatever you open has its own case ID. Uh, so it's pretty simple. He's a good guy. Huh? He's really, uh, you know, uh, going to the works on this. Okay. Okay, great. for Fredo, from Cynthia. Uh, yeah, I think you should take this one, Judah. All right. Well, I gotta find it first. Uh, um, let me read it for you from Cynthia Holmes yeah. for for Fredo's. I think it might be even for Aya. Is there a chatbot or customer service to help set up a freight quote online if we have questions about the uh, dims and weights and how to calculate the space required for the shipment? Yes, of course. Um, so as I mentioned, my team is available for online chat through our uh, website, ship.freitos.com. That's where you find your quotes and that's where you see a chat on the bottom right of the page where you can chat with someone online while you're searching if you have any questions about the search. We also offer a help center with with videos on how to run a search, what recommended services you might need, um, what happens after you place a booking, and how to communicate with the shipping company. All of this you can find on our website, ship.freitos.com. Yep, and the, it's multimodal, so you can get quotes for air or for ocean. Um, yes. And there's the ex express as well. Um, OK, I think those are all the questions. If you have more questions or you want more information, um, you can check out the Fredos.com marketplace at ship.fredos.com. Um, and you can email the success team at success at Fredos.com for any more questions that maybe you didn't, haven't thought of right now, questions for Fredos. Um, and for Gatita, you can reach out to Gatita at Gatita.com or to Yoni directly. He even gave you his, his email address right here, uh, Yoni M at Gatita.com. Um, that's it. There's also a lot more resources about uh, freight and logistics and questions in general. Um, not just about the Fredos.com marketplace, at Fredos.com. There are all kinds of resources to, to help you in terms of uh, logistics planning and understanding uh, the ecosystem. Um, and I, I think that's about it. Let, let's just see if we have more questions coming in. No, I think that was it. And we're just about out of time as well. So thank you, everyone, very much. Thank you, Yoni, for, uh, yeah, for your contribution. It's been really interesting. And Aya, uh, thank you very much as well. And thanks to all of you for attending. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a good bye day. Bye.